Our stock of the day, off the back of uh, earnings season, is Flight Centre uh, boosting its full year guidance after it flew back into profit in the first half as travel demand soars. Net profit for the six months through to December coming in just shy of 87 million. That's versus a $20 million loss in the prior period and a beat on market expectations. Revenue surging as total transaction values rose 15% to more than 11 billion with an interim dividend of 10 cents a share declared. Uh, when it comes to the outlook, Flight Centre saying the fiscal second half so far was performing in line with expectations, adding that after four years of disruption and then gradual recovery, 2024 is set to be a watershed for travel. Uh, interestingly though, its shares have been punished somewhat uh, this morning. That's probably up to total transaction volumes did miss many analyst expectations there in its report. So let's see what our exports, uh, ex experts I should say, think. Uh, Daniel, let's start with you then. What, what did you make of that from Flight Centre? Yeah, look, Flight Centre always have very busy results, Andrew. It's, it's a little bit of a difficult business to understand, especially from an accounting point of view. So I think you've hit the key, you know, headline figures on the head. Uh, overall, it actually was from a headline level, you know, better than expected. Um, the key story with Flight Centre is still that you know, that underlying profit margin recovery. So, you know, the business operates on around about a 1% net profit margin and pretty much I haven't listened to the analyst call, but I can almost guarantee that the, all of the questions would have been about their recovery and trajectory to that 2% target. So th there's a good story unfolding here. Uh, I'm assuming the market's reaction was perhaps around, like you said, um, that Mr. TTV, which is you know perhaps an unsustainable revenue yield going forward. Um, these are questions we still need to ask and why it's so difficult to analyze this business. Uh, but yeah, look, Flight Centre to me, it's all about the margin recovery going forward. We know volumes can be choppy in travel and they do have a very strong presence in corporate travel and I think even had a record result in corporate travel as well. But yeah, it's all about that story and the underlying net profit margin here. The upgrades seem to be driven by cancellation, I think, in, in some of their debt convertible hybrids, which uh, reduce their amortization expense. So not a technically a high quality upgrade, um, but look, you know, company's trajectory uh, is going in the right trajectory for me. Um, but of course, like I mentioned, everything about focus now is on this margin recovery story. Mm. It is a long way back, as we can see from uh, the heady heights uh, back in uh, pre-COVID. Uh, so, Daniel, what would you be doing with the stock then? Yeah, look, overall, uh, I'd still be happy with a hold. We know that the dilution has come through already from the raising since COVID. So, you know, you just be careful looking at that share price chart. A lot of um, of our uh, members on Stock Doctor have said it looks like there's great recovery still to come. But on an enterprise value basis, I think the business is actually worth more now than it was pre-COVID. So just consider that, but there actually has been opportunities for consolidation and improvement in market share and um, in that corporate travel business as well. So I think the future of this company is bright. It's always been a pretty good company, um, but like I said, you're really betting on that margin story here. So happy to hold it. Mm. Uh, let's wait and see how that goes in the second half. Yep, okay. Michael, are you on board? <laughs> We're not on board Flight Centre. Um, we have sort of partaken in that space through Webjet previously, but looking at this flight center result in particular, as touched upon, it was quite messy because of some of those amortization <laughs> um, one-off type transactions. Um, so people are trying to work out whether it beat or miss, and I think broad consensus is was basically in line. Um, this is a company that has been on the recovery path now for a number of years, reinstated the dividends, did manage to eke out a a guidance upgrade, um, despite the fact it wasn't the highest quality upgrade. Their corporate travel business seems to be you know, doing very, very well. And they have slowly evolved this business model away from their reliance on bricks and mortar. And that continues to come through, but it is very much about the margins. The margin expansion, I think, needs to be more pronounced um, in order to maintain the rally and recovery that we've been seeing um, in recent years. So from my standpoint, happy to go with a hold. The result was okay without being spectacular. Uh, they did, however, point to the fact that January and February um, has been pretty strong and the macro conditions are holding up fairly well, as well as the fact that there has been a, modera uh, a moderation in airline fees, um, which does help boost demand for a lot of their products and bundles, etc. So look, there's a bit of a, a mixed bag, I think, in today's number. So that's probably why the markets hasn't been overly excited.
So as a, as a reference there, the company is seeing this year as being a watershed uh, year yeah. for travel. W- would you agree with that? And, and how do you place then Flight Centre in the mix of yeah. Webjet, corporate travel and the like? It's hard to say what's going to happen you know, with travel. You look back at 2023, everyone was talking about doomsday scenarios, really high inflation, really high interest rates, mortgage cliffs, these kind of things. And there was a lot of expectation that the consumer was going to get battered and it didn't really play out that way. And it's a, a bit similar again in 2024. There are some people who expect that it's just really a, a lag impact of interest rates and eventually the big buffers that Australia got throughout the COVID, the big cash handouts, which were very elevated relative to the rest of the world, will continue to be diminished and it could sort of play out in 2024 where the consumer starts to to hurt a lot. Um, I still think that people will continue to travel. There's no doubt that people are placing great emphasis on experiences and maybe maybe cutting back in other areas. Um, So it's hard to say, but looking, our preference is Webjet just because of their Webbeds business, which is basically a marketplace for travel agents to go and, and purchase bundles and airfares, et cetera. Um, corporate travel is more aligned to the corporate space and that had a pretty tough update recently. So our mm. preference would still be for Webjet in that space. Yep. All right.